Hey there, so in today's episode we are going to be talking about um, PCG components, procedural content generation, and how to generate content on uh, not static meshes but on actors. So this is the catch. You can't apparently for now spawn actors, spawn content of procedurally generated um, on static meshes wherever you want. You need to first create a blueprint out of them and then you need to um, procedurally generate the content you want on them. So in my case, I have this floor right here. This was a static mesh previously, but I had to go ahead and in my blueprints folder, right click, blueprint class, actor, and name it something, and then open it up. And now you see that um, I have a cube for it. So just go ahead and add a cube for it or whatever you, whatever mesh that you're using. If you are using a wall, a different mesh, a, uh, I don't know, a car, a head, a skeletal mesh, whatever really. Just go ahead and add that in here um, or you can add a cube and then change the setting mesh afterwards and then make sure the material is correct then compile and close it up and drag it into your scene just drag it into your scene just like that um, and then you have a blueprint actor instead of a mesh so the next phase we are going to do is to create a first of all if you want to use procedurally generated content you have to go to the plugins and then procedural make sure the, 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 this one is turned on you can go ahead and turn this one on as well it gives you some new nodes that are related to um, mesh sampling but we don't use it in in this episode then right click pcg and a pcg graph open it up name it something and then open it up and then you are gonna be welcomed by something like this we which we don't use <laughs> so to start off just go ahead and get actor data this is what we are using to um get the data that exists in our scene so actor filter is all world actors by tag definitely so in my case i've added v as a tag so if you go ahead in the blueprint floor in the self where is the tag if i can find it yeah um so you you can just go ahead and add a tag called v in here and then it will just get whatever data you have you can change this as well i don't recommend it i used get single point um these don't work really they just throw some errors at you not this one though it just didn't work uh, but parse component parse actor components is the way to go okay um, so this was the catch if you haven't watched the previous episode of me explaining all the procedurally generated content uh, before then this is for you if you know what are you what you're doing then you just don't need to watch the rest of the video okay so now we are getting the actor data we have so we need to sample sample that data which in our case is a surface so surface sample sampler because we have already our surface and we just need to sample it so if I uh, right click debug it you can see what I'm talking about this is what it gives us so if i'm to change the floor it doesn't spawn the content anymore it only spawns the content if those content are going to be spawned on the floor so if i just go ahead yeah it doesn't spawn it anymore that's a good thing um and the looseness looseness is as i had already explained if you haven't watched the previous video uh, there should be a link around here or there should have been 
I don't know, you, you get the idea. Um, so looseness, if you are to um, make this value higher, you're going to get lower amount of content generated on your scene. If you lower the value of looseness, you will get more content. Uh, but this one is okay if you higher this value then you'll get more if you lower this value if you'll get less uh, so point extent is really important so in my case I am going to use a wood in here I need to make sure that point extent is going to I need to make sure that these are going to be the same size as the wood that I'm going to be having later on. This is this is not the way that good time to explain it. Let me explain it again later on when we are around here. And then we have to transform the points because as you can see the points are Oh, they actually are stuck to the ground. Oh no, they aren't. So that's that's a problem. We have to just uh, get them to go a little bit higher. So that's why we use transform points. Just type in transform points. This one right here. Um, and then I'm just going to use absolute offset and absolute rotation and pro definitely um, uniform scale, some random scale. So absolute rotation means that I want something to be random. So if you just see it, all are generated randomly, right? Uh, the absolute offset, I want it to go higher than the ground I don't want it to I don't want the half of it to go lower I mean don't pay attention to this you can later on uh, fix everything fix all the errors that you have when you have the mesh itself um, and then we don't want everything to generate on each other we want them to just not ignore the, the existence of each other so to do that we have something called self running then when you use this one it will just delete all the things that aren't necessary or that are colliding to, with each other and then we can use what we have right now to spawn a static mesh which is this one static mesh spawner and then you go ahead in the mesh entries add one uh, and then you're going to add your static mesh to the scene you can change a lot of different things for example collision mobility um, cast shadow everything that you have in the details panel for a static mesh okay so what if we want to change a transform while we are having other things in our scene well that's not hard really you just go ahead and you have the transform points you have the for example for example I want it to go higher so let's see 50 60 now they're all levitating look at them actually okay so this one's so high so we can probably go a little bit lower until this one's on the on the ground yeah that's it if you want to make sure that this one's on the ground and this one's on the ground too you can just go ahead and separate them all together so in my case I am um, using two different scale uh, 
one is set to one the minimum and the maximum is set to three you can just go ahead and leave them all as one and then probably use another transform point and another like something like this control c control v to get something else and then you can transform the other one which is the three or two and then set the offset based on what you have okay this was it um so this is something similar we are just generating this on the ground if you go ahead and see the sampler this is the sampler we have oh no not don't disable it and then this is what we're gonna have after um, making the rotation random and then we are static mesh spawn and spawning the mesh we have okay this one's uh, the rock that we are having in our scene so we have some rocks that are procedurally generated in the scene so how we can get them okay the surface sampler is I mean you need to make sure that the seeds at least the seeds different the looseness the points per square meter all of them are not the same otherwise you will get uh, exactly the same the location of the points will be similar you don't want that so make sure that at least the seed is different so in our case I didn't want to spawn the rocks on the woods so what I ended up doing was to use a difference node so it just means that yeah <laughs> calculate the difference between this and this and that's it so you can just go ahead and difference if we debug it this is the points we ended up having if we debug this these are all the points that it just removed from the scene yeah um and then we are again making the rotation random and making the scale random nothing fancy so uniform scale absolute rotation 0 0.1 0 0.7 and then statics uh sp stat static mesh spawner and for the last thing that we are using we are using this one on the ground This is the surface sampler again make sure this is different i to make sure that everything looks different i always go ahead and change the looseness and points per square meter as well so this is this one again i'm using the difference between these two to differ this as well so these are all the points i am getting right now and I know which one is it really so let's see okay these are all the points that we will get later on so we have a problem here that this one's colliding with this one to fix that we can again use a difference node between this and this oh okay now now that's a problem let's see okay this one this didn't work so the next thing that i would do to fix this issue oh it actually worked So we can filter by density as well. Maybe that works. Mm. 
filter density filter let's see if this one is going to get rid of the things we are not using okay so we yeah that that fixed it so we can just change the upper bound and then it will it will fix the issues we are having in that one and make sure the debug is off or oh, whatever by the way the debug key is d and enable is e you need to memorize that as well so save and um this one's on make sure this is off save and this is what we ended up having and i am pretty satisfied with it look it's not bad not bad at all really and you can go even further and add a lot of more details to the scene May maybe you want to have your walls as a blueprint and then maybe you need to populate the walls with some other actors that are procedurally generated and then you can create a whole scene that's procedurally generated so if you want to change the scene you can have all the actors move around and then gen being generated again procedurally that's the that's the keyword procedural it's like magic Okay, I hope this one helped and if it did help, please hit that like button and have a great day. Bye.